I have been the cantor of Temple Emmanuel of San Francisco for the past 25 years. It's my 25th year now. The congregation is uh, over 150 years old. It was established in 1849. It was a classical reform congregation. Most Jews around the world, however, in other places, except Israel, where they're very secular actually, except for the Orthodox, um, most Jews are Orthodox Jews. Part of the joy is that Singing, while it's very, very important in the role of a cantor, is not the, the uh, primary role anymore of most cantors because we sing once a week or twice a week, but really we're teachers and we're pastors. Very often I will perform a wedding where the rabbi is the chief officiant and I am the, uh, the cantor who sings the liturgy. I also perform a wedding solo as the chief officiant. The ceremony can take place anywhere as long as there's a chuppah, uh, but you really may not perform a Jewish wedding on the Sabbath. One of the reasons, for instance, is that you can't sign a ketubah on the Sabbath. You can't write on the Sabbath, so you couldn't perform the ceremony. Weddings are, would not be performed, for instance, on Yom Kippur or on Rosh Hashanah, you know, a major festival day. There are Jews in India. You know, there are Jews in Yemen, there are Jews in Iraq, there are Jews in Egypt. Uh, each come with their own traditions. As far as American traditions, I think you'll find that uh, the Jewish traditions around receptions and weddings and everything will pretty much reflect the communities they live in. If it's a, a wedding in Atlanta, it'll probably be very Southern. And if it's a wedding in LA, it'll probably be very Hollywood. The chuppah is the Jewish wedding canopy. It has usually four poles. Sometimes people will hold those poles as an honor. Very often it's a family talit, a prayer shawl, or something that may have been embroidered by a member of the family. The canopy over also represents the hovering presence of God. We always have to remember that this is a sacred moment and that God is watching, and that God, we believe that God made this match at some point. It's quite a simple ceremony. It usually doesn't last more than 20 minutes. Sometimes uh, couples will say traditional wedding vows if they choose to. The couple have signed a wedding contract before the ceremony, and uh, the modern form of that wedding contract, which is called a ketubah, very often reflects wedding vows. In Hebrew, every letter of the alphabet has a numerical equivalent. And the number 30 is the letter Lamed, and the number 2 is the letter Bet. And when you put those two letters together, they spell Lev, which means heart. So it's a beautiful thing that the formula adds up to the word for heart. And so the, the ring is placed on the index finger, which goes straight to the heart before it's changed over to the ring finger. And the main liturgy is a set of seven blessings known as the Sheva Brachot. Some rabbis have lovely voices and sing them. Some rabbis probably just recite them. The blessings refer to creation, to the love of bride and groom, to the world being perfected under God's rule with the, with the coming together of two wonderful souls. And then there's usually a final benediction. And uh, at that point, we also smash a glass. Right before coming under the chuppah, she will circle the groom seven times. This imagery is akin to weaving a web around the groom so that it's a protection. No one else should get to him, you know, she owns him. And uh, nowadays, though, with all this egalitarianism, we'll very often see 
uh, the bride do three circles, the groom do three circles, and then they'll circle each other. The issue of interfaith marriages has been a hot button in the Jewish community for many, many years. Post-Holocaust, with the loss of six million Jews, this was a really, really difficult and painful issue for many Jewish families. I make it a point to adjust the liturgy of the seven wedding blessings a bit and of the ring ceremony. I use a different formula. Very often, um, the non-Jewish partner will seek conversion. We've had quite a lot of success with that and might redo the ceremony, you know, with all the liturgy intact. It feels strange to be performing a Jewish ceremony and having somehow another liturgy of another faith there when you're, when you're under one umbrella. If there's a minister in the family, I will invite that person to take part by reading some of the Song of Songs from the Bible or something appropriate that way. At a traditional wedding, the women will be off dancing and the men will be off dancing, so no mingling of that. Nowadays, usually in, in, in more liberal settings, conservative reform weddings, the receptions will be just like any other reception. A band, all kinds of music, happy, lots of food, and the horror. Dancing the horror, doing the chairs, that's sort of, you gotta do that. That's de rigueur, as they say. <laughs>